Hello everyone, happy Halloween, and welcome back to Steel Forest Welding and Forge. Today I have a tool review for you, and I'm going to be reviewing the, the, dis, feels, the, dick, feels, the, dice, feels, the, uh, this double head cutter drill attachment metal nibbler. All right, let's go ahead and start with the unboxing. You'll have to forgive me for the poor lighting. I'm a blacksmith and a welder, not a videographer. So, uh, oh, look at that. It's a nice metal case. I like that. That's going to stand some punishment. So we open this guy right here. We have our instructions. This is for cutting circles and for cutting straight lines. You have a wrench. You have a step drill. A handle. I really like this foam insert here. It's going to keep everything in here from banging around. Looks like this is one of the cutting heads. Looks like that's the main units right there. That is beefy. That's no wimpy little piece of metal. Looks like there's something else down in here. Oh my. That is wedged in there. And that... If I had a guess, maybe the cutting head? Yep, that's probably what it is. Ah, there's one in here already, so this is probably an extra one. Well, that's nice they gave us an extra one. All right, so there's the unboxing part. I am going to go ahead, read the instructions, and put this guy together once I know what to do. All right, so after reading the instructions, it looks like this guy is pretty much ready to go right out of the box. All the parts that come with it are replaceable. So I'm going to go ahead and put this guy on. You can see that turns freely. I'm gonna go to the cutting heads. Then take the handle and you just put it over the side that you're not using. I'm guessing they did this to make this interchangeable for left-handed and right-handed people. Well, everything seems smooth so far. So we'll go ahead and get a piece of copper here clamped up on the table and we'll give this thing a demo. All right, we've got a little piece of 27 gauge copper here ready to go. This guy's about as thin as it's gonna get when I'm cutting this guy. We wanna test it on something kinda small first, see how it does. So we're gonna go ahead and just cut a little bit of a quick line here and see what happens. Hmm. Let's try that again. I think I had this going the wrong direction. All right. Oh, so far, so good. You know what? Let's give that a little bit more RPMs. Let's see how she does then. That's what I was looking for. Cut to that baby like butter. Looks like it did a pretty decent job. A little bit of a burr on there. A little bit of some Thule marks. Ooh, that's, that's a little concerning. Because I did buy this for cutting uh, artist copper pieces. Um, so if it's going to have tool marks on it, I'm going to be careful what side I do some cutting on. Let's give it one more go. I gotta say, with this thing, you have to give it a little bit of some effort. Otherwise, it does not move. Let's try again. That went pretty good. As you can see, it makes these little kind of half moon cuts. 
It leaves a little bit of some tooling marks there. It looks like on the top. Oh, you're all ready for ballet? Mommy, I put makeup on me. Oh, Mommy, put makeup on you and your jasmine? You look very pretty. It's time to go. Oh, it's time to go? Okay, I'll come say goodbye. All right, so back to business. So it looks like this guy does leave some tooling marks. And it looks like it leaves them on both pieces, but only on the front part of the tool. And that's going to be a problem because I do have a piece of copper here I'm cutting for a piece of artwork. And the pattern's on the front, not on the back. So there is a chance that if I do this, I'm going to end up with a bunch of tooling marks in the front. So I'm going to have to re-scribe this on the back. So that way, when I'm cutting, I'm not leaving tooling marks in the front. All right, we've got everything set up and ready to go. So I do have this piece of artwork flipped over. This is the back side because, again, this seems to leave tooling marks on the top of your cut. I don't want to see those. Now, one disadvantage I've seen to this product here, this tool, is that it does require a substantial amount of force to push it along. So you do absolutely need to have your part clamped down. Uh, so for copper, for example, uh, this is already formed. And I have to clamp this down. I don't want to put a bend mark in it. I did spend a lot of time forming this. And if you'd like to see the video on the tool that I used to form this, this little simple fixture right here, you can look in the description down below and I'll link the video that I made for making this guy. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and give this a cut here. We're gonna see how it turns out. Safety glasses and gloves. It's already feeling a little awkward here. Hmm, how can I do this? This might be the way to go. All right, cross your fingers, here we go. Hmm, not sure I like that. You know what? I think we're gonna clamp this in my post vise. All right, I got this clamped on my post vise instead. I can put a foot on this guy and keep it from moving as much. Um, we'll see what happens here. Wish me luck, everyone, because uh, I really don't want to screw this thing up. And I should probably have this in the cutting direction I'm gonna need to go. All right, here we go. All right, let's reposition here. stuck here. Not sure what's going on. I've got the hell jammed up the copper. Hmm. Okay. I'll get you out of there. All right, let's try that again. I'm going to get a pair of tin snips really quick and snip that off. Oh, and for the record, this is 18 gauge copper. So I think part of the problem is that I'm just couldn't quite get the angle in there for this to cut properly. So let's give this another go here. I think we'll be good if I position this slightly different. Yep, 
Yep, this guy is really picky about its positioning. If it's not perfect, it is not going to want to go. Alright. So I'll tell you what, let's go ahead, turn this guy around on the vise, and cut it in the opposite direction. Hopefully I'm not going to be a bear in a china store here, or a bull in a china store, and be able to see what I'm doing. If I can position this this way, it'll be a little better. Okay. Start from here. Position one last time. Here we go. So there we go. There it is in action. So it looks like it left tooling marks on both sides here. As you can see on that copper, see that line? Yeah, that's not the greatest thing in the world. Um, I am going to have to work this down. Those lines, you know, I'm not very good at this tool yet. I'm not very good at using it, so I'm going to have to practice before I'm really good at it, but it turned out okay. So here are my final thoughts on this tool. So this tool right here is only $35. If you try and buy an electric nibbler on Amazon, for example, that's going to cost you more in the $300 range. So for $35, you know, again, in tooling, you get what you pay for. I'd say this is a pretty smart investment for people who don't want to put $300 toward a metal nibbler that they're only going to use a handful of times. As far as how well the tool does, it does make sharp, uh, good turns and sharp turns too. In fact, a little too sharp. There's a couple times, you know, places in here I have to go over this with some kind of cleanup tool and get rid of all these uh, sharp edges. My only big concern with this tool is again, those tooling marks. Now, at first I thought those marks only show up on the front side of the cut, but they actually turn out on both. So if you're using this for art, for example, and you want some really, uh, nice, clean, and pretty lines. Yeah, I don't know if this will work for you or not. This is going to require some significant cleanup. That's why we have power tools. One thing I forgot to mention is this does come with a guide. This guide is used for cutting straight lines and also for cutting circles, which is why it has the step drill. You take the step drill, you drill a hole in your steel or copper. You set this guide here for half of the diameter of your circle, and you put this in the hole, and then you can run this around in a circle all the way around your part and cut out a circle. And then you can either use that circle for some other kind of project, or you just may need to cut a circle and a piece of steel to put it up maybe against something. I don't know. And you can also use it for cutting a straight line. You can use this as a guide to run along the edge of something and just cut a straight line. So, would I recommend this tool to someone else? Absolutely. Um, again, in the world of tooling, you're getting what you pay for, and for $35 versus putting another zero in front of that for a tool, you can't beat that price, and you can't beat the results. All right, everyone, that is my review. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and before you guys go, if you could please like and subscribe to this video. Write any questions or comments you may have down below. I really do enjoy answering your uh, questions about metalworking and blacksmithing, all that good stuff. So please, feel free to ask. Thanks again for watching, everyone, and have a happy Halloween.